I'm Heather Joseph Witham. I have a PhD in the field of folklore and mythology from UCLA and currently I'm Associate Professor in Liberal Arts and Sciences at Otis College of Art and Design in Los Angeles. I get to be an expert on lots of funny shows, <laughs> only on cable. Um, so I've um, gone on to discuss various kinds of folklore or supernatural happenings on shows like Sightings or The Other Side or Magic Mysteries and Miracles and Ancient Mysteries, all those kinds of shows. And then I was a regular on a show called Mythbusters for the first two seasons, which was a lot of fun. At Otis College, I teach a class called Modern Mysticism in the Afterlife, which is a great class, um, which talks about you know the movement of the New Age and modern mysticism based in um, the spiritualism of the Victorian era through the present. Um, and we also partner with a cemetery, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, who has this extraordinary Day of the Dead celebration. Um, so through the research I did for the class about the history of um, perspectives on the afterlife, um, as well as seeing the ways people are seeking to welcome their deceased through these Day of the Dead altars that they make at this Hollywood Forever Cemetery, um, I thought it would be engaging to um, combine those two things and really write about how we seek to contact the deceased now, what it means, how can I analyze this? How does this function for people? Why do we choose these methods? Okay, so right now I'm doing the groundwork and the research for what I hope will be an eventual book, either called Afterlife Junkies or A Guide to the Afterlife. I'm not quite sure yet. It depends how all of my research comes out. But the book itself is meant to be a look at the customs and traditions that we have for contacting beings in the afterlife. It's a core question for most people in life. Do we go on after we die? What happens after we die? And part of the way we formulate our opinion is based on our experiences and the customs and the things that we do um, to contact those in the afterlife. So did we have news about the afterlife from someone who died or someone we knew who died or from an apparition we, we don't know? Um, so that's what I'm studying right now. The way I'm conducting my research is that every single thing that I'm researching is based in what I call field work. Um, anthropologists and folklorists, the, both fields are grounded in the concept of field work, that you go out, you talk to people, and you get original data, and then you back it up with good solid research and analysis. Um, so everything that I'm doing, let's say I want to talk about people contacting the dead through ghost hunting. I'm going ghost hunting first, and I'm interviewing people who are ghost hunting. I'm interviewing the professional, if there's such a thing, ghost hunters, I'm observing, I'm seeing what's going on. Then I'm also doing the book research and some kind of functional analysis. So that way I can ground my research in something that I consider to be very real. Um, so when you're doing field work, one of the tech, there's two techniques I like to use in field work that's very good for any kind of interview. One is called the open-ended interview. So it's exactly what I'm saying. You don't um, only have the questions listed or written down, but you let it go on organically so that you can see what you can discover. Really listen to the answers that your interviewee um, has so that you can respond likely, you know, instead of just going down your list. You'll get much better data that way. The other thing I use is um, called participant observation. You need the interview and you need the participant observation. So field work for me is like an essential part of my research. But all of my work is qualitative. I want to find out what makes people tick, why people believe what they do. Not just that they believe, but why they believe, how they believe, and more importantly, how it functions for them. And I can only get to that through field work, not through a survey. So a survey might be a good place to start. Now, use other people's surveys, sure. Oh, this percent believe in God, or this percent believe in you know, ghosts, which is a big percent. But that doesn't get me anywhere for my form of analysis at all. Now people are deliberately going out and seeking ghosts using technology, not just their eyes. They're using recorders to try to capture EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, electronic. Uh -huh. um, they're using EMFs to try to get some kind of magnetic something. Um, 
They're using digital temperature gauges in order to see if the temperature goes down because the ghost sucked the energy out of the air in that area. They're making reality shows too. They're making reality shows. So a lot of these things that um, people are interested in and that are spreading are spreading through technology and the knowledge of them um, through the internet or through television programming. A lot of people in the present um, look at is it real or is it fraud? Um, this is not what I'm doing at all. Um, you know, when I go to a mediumship session and I see the way it's transforming people and changing their perspectives and sometimes changing their behavior, what I'm interested in is how seeing the medium and getting the contact they got functions for them. You're, you're not just writing anymore, you've got to keep in mind that people are reading or accessing the information in a different way. They expect to see pictures on your website or um, video clips. Um, so you've got to think about when you're in the field and you're interviewing someone, I've got to stop, I've got to make sure to take a picture or get some video of this event too because that's the way people are accessing this information. And of course they should. They have, I'm used to looking at videos too. Um, and I want to see something in action. Um, so maybe it's another step you have to take when you're doing your research now, I think. And you almost have to write in a different way um, in order to make that other content look organic. Right. I always, you know, with my students, when I send them out to do field work, I always have them make sure that they, you know, sort of come up with a plan um, first plan what they're doing and do some research during that time so when they go in the field they know something. So that would be the first part of field research would be the planning. The second would be the collecting in and of itself. So when you're collecting make sure you have all your equipment, make sure you have backups for your equipment, make sure you have extra batteries, make sure you have everything plus. Um, and if you're uncomfortable with an open-ended technique, yeah, I guess you do need a list of questions. It just depends, you know, um, what you're doing. Um, and the third part would be your analysis, which is putting all your information together with your book and journal and article research and finding a way to make meaning out of it. And that's the most important and the hardest part, right? Is trying to say, you know, I think this means this and this is why. This is how this thing, this custom, this tradition, this activity functions for the people involved. This is what it means. Funding's always a thorny issue. <laughs> um, I was funded um, from two different directions from my own college that I work at. First, I was given a faculty development grant, um, which paid for me to go to an afterlife conference in Connecticut, um, and also paid for me to go ghost hunting in Utah with some Mormon ghost hunters, which should make a spicy chapter. Um, additionally, this semester I'm on what they call sabbatical, which is something you can apply for every seven years as an academic, um, whereby you are paid to not go to work and um, research. So it's been, uh, I, I've been very fortunate to have those things and it, it's really enabled me to get a lot of my research um, going. Well, I'm doing the field research for this now um, and sending out book proposals. So after that, the timeline is um, roughly a year for me to get the book finished and dependent upon how long it takes to publish. And those times can vary widely. So um, I hope not too long, goodness. Because I think it's a, it's a very hot topic right now and I don't want something out, you know, certainly five years from now, I'd like it out a lot sooner.